as we meditate on the goodness of God. Let's stand and sing, Come Let Us Worship the Lord. This morning, Elder Brooks asked me if I felt like I was being blessed this week. And I said to him, well, God's blessing others through me. But then I thought about it. If God's blessing others through me, that means he's blessing me as well. So if you want to get a blessing out of worship service today, try to bless somebody else while you're here. We're not just here to take a blessing from God. We're here to be witnesses and bless others that are in this room as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives this week. Thank you for the privilege of being able to worship in your house today. And Lord, please change our mindset if it needs to be changed. That we're not here just to receive a blessing, but we're here to be blessed by giving a blessing as well. We invite you into this worship service. We ask you, you, your Holy Spirit, to take advantage and take control of this worship service today. Our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship as we sing our morning hymn, Jesus, the Light of the World.
you love Jesus. Amen. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. Happy holidays. I'm glad to be here today. Are you? We are truly blessed. And I'm wondering, are there any visitors with us this morning that we're going to ask you to stand if you are a visitor with us here this morning. Any visitors? Amen. Thank the Lord. Remain standing as the ushers bring you a token of our appreciation that you're here. It is a blessed Sabbath day. It's sunny. It's cool and crisp, but we need cool and crisp days. The cooler it gets, it kills all the bad insects. And they say when it snows, it cleans the air. God is always blessing us. So we're thankful for you to be here today. And at this time, we're going to ask the members of this family, DuPont, to be a blessing. Make sure we greet our visitor and visitors and greet each other in the name of Jesus. Amen. morning DuPont Park. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Come on, if you're glad to be in the house of God, put your hands together and give God some praise. It is good to be in the house of God on today. I am so excited to see y'all. God is good, amen? Amen. Amen. God is so good. 
I'm glad to be here. I know it's a little bit cold outside, but those of you that know me know that I love the cold. I probably made a lot of enemies right there. I'm by myself, that's what she said. Well, I love the cold, but it's still a beautiful day to be in the house of God today. I just want to welcome you again on behalf of the senior pastor who is not here and is away and traveling, keep him in prayer, and myself. We just want to welcome you to the house of God today. I have a few kingdom announcements. DuPont Park, on Tuesday, we pray and? Come on, say it like you mean it. We pray and? We pray and fast from the time that you get up to? Noon. To 12, to noonday. I always, and I will always encourage you to take time and pray and give God the time and seek God as prayer. We're living in a time where we definitely need to hear from God. Somebody say amen. 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 So from, from the time you rise up to noonday, take time to pray and, and seek God in prayer. When you look in the bulletin, you will see the first item on the bulletin will be the prayer request, which is a prayer request. The Harrow family is in need of our prayers. Melvin Harrow's brother, Russell Harrow, passed away on Thursday, December 7, and the funeral services will be held on Monday, December 18, at the Wild Fam Funeral Home. That address that you have in the bulletin says 9000 Liberty Road, but the address is actually 9200 Liberty Road. I just want you to make that note. It's 9200 Liberty Road. So we ask that you also, as you keep the family in prayer, that you will also keep them in prayer on that Tuesday. You will also see in the bulletin announcements a blue sheet. And this sheet has, says, remember our sick and shut in. Basically encouraging us to call, to check in, to visit those who are sick and shut in. This is a very important part of our ministry here at DuPont Park. Amen. 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 It's a very important part of our ministry here at DuPont Park. It is one way we can continuously show love to those who are not able to come to church to make them feel loved and to know, help, help them know that they're not forgotten. Somebody say amen. amen. The worst thing in life is to feel forgotten. The worst thing sometimes in life is to feel forgotten. How many of y'all were here on Thursday for the DuPont Park School play? I see a few of y'all. Were y'all blessed? It was such a good play. This was my first play here. And, you know, I told, I told the parents the, when... Um, after the play, after the play, I said, I text my wife and I said, babe, I'm glad that you were not here. And she said, well, why? And I said, well, because these kids were so cute. And you know, this is not the Lord's doing right now because how cute these kids look. They did such an awesome job. And I just want to encourage you to remember that this is your school. This is your school. Support your school. Love on your school. Encourage your school. Those kids did an amazing job. They did an amazing job. I was so encouraged the way they acted with such professionalism. But God is good. Just continue to keep DuPont Park School in prayer and continue to pray for this church, the school, and the teachers that God will always continue to lead and guide. Somebody say amen. 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 Um, I'm sad to announce that Winter Wonderland will not be today. Oh, I know. I know. Winter Wonderland will not be today. It has been postponed to January. The date and time has not been determined and will be determined. And at that time, we will make sure to announce it ahead of time and give you enough time to prepare. And we we'll hope to see you there. I'm going to call upon my sister to come and make an announcement right now. You doing all right? Yeah. Good morning, church. get set up for this time, but I understand that there's a lot of questions about the black tie. One of the questions being, will there be real meat, not just vegetarian? And yes, there will. We'll have plenty of salmon and chicken for those of you all who eat real meat. And we will have the fake chicken for those who don't eat the real meat. So we will have a variety of vegetables and everything. So come on out and join us. Um, someone also asks, is there a discount? Well, tickets at Camelot are $100, so $65 is your discount. Amen? 
Amen. And it was one more question. I can't remember it. Oh, the black tie. It is a black tie affair. That means you dress the best from head to toe because it's a black tie affair. Anybody have any other questions? If you are an elderly person and you're interested in coming, please see me. If you're worried about how you're going to get there um, in your ticket, if you would see me, we can discuss that. Thank you. Remember, December 31st at the Camelot. Tickets are 65. Thank you. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. The first black tie. I heard DuPont Park really can show out. I was talking to Elder Signe Evans earlier in the office, so I'm looking forward to it, to dressing up and showing out. Somebody say amen. 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 We asked Elder Evans if she could hang. Obviously, he's brand new here. <laughs> but uh, we at DuPont, we do a lot of things well, don't we? We do a yeah. lot. The school play, we do well. Uh, it's a black tie event, we do well. But there's one thing that I'm here to thank you for, that we do well every year, and only because of you, and that is the Messiah. We had the Messiah performance last week, and it was done well. We had some new things, and we had a ethnomusicologist. Now, I know I'm not the only one that didn't know what an ethnomusicologist was, and I was a bit embarrassed. I didn't tell any of you yet last week, but I went home and I looked it up, so for those of you who, who uh, were like me, I'm going to tell you what an ethnomusicologist is. Ethnomusicology is the study of music in its cultural context. Etho, ethnomusicologists approach music as a social, social process in order to understand, now this is what it is, not only what music is, but why. Somebody got a degree in why music is. <laughs> Have mercy. And what it means to it, what music means to its practitioner and its audiences, and how those meanings are conveyed. One of the, I just want to share a little bit about the effort that was put in by the entire choir. They had a practice session where they went through the entire or parts of the uh, the music that they would present without singing, but they had to show the expression while he conducted. And he would stop them and say, no, 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 I don't see it in your faces. Let me see it in your faces because we're singing about the Messiah. So I just want you to know that it was done well, and it was done well because you supported it. Amen. We could not do this if it wasn't for you. So my whole purpose of this announcement is to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. Amen. As we're approaching the end of the year, I want to continue to remind, we want to remind you that the Treasury Department after twin, December 31st, 2017, anything you give after will count for the year 2018. So if you have any gifts, you want to make up, you want to catch up you know, for the year 2017, we want to encourage you to give before December 31st, 2017, because what you give after that will count for the year 2018. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Um, for those of you that are participating in Sacred Sister, would you see my wife after church for, to receive your information, exchanging of gifts at that time? Also today at 5.30, AYS will be hosting a youth and young adult teen social uh, in the cafeteria at 5.30. We want to invite all the youth, the young adult, the teens to come and support and have a good time. Somebody say amen. 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 I want to invite Elder um, Lamont Bailey at this time to come up and give a short presentation. Good morning, church family. Uh, Brother Bill Pitt, if you are under the sound of my voice, please make your way forward. Thanks, Mike. Um, DuPont Park is a church that has a passion for God 
and what? And a compassion for people. Our compassion for people is not empty. It's driven. We're compelled based on our passion for God that we have. Brother Bill uh, Pitt is our community services leader. And I asked him to come forward this morning to share with you, church family, what is DuPont Park Church Community Services doing as it relates to Thanksgiving? Bill, did you do anything special for Thanksgiving? Yes, we did. We did. We, um, this year, the community service ministry, uh, we distribute some 90 turkeys to the community Amen. along with uh, all the other trimmings that, that they needed for Thanksgiving. We also gave away some 10-pound packs of chicken breasts and uh, some uh, beef briskets to the community. And not only uh, that was that was a community service, your community service pantry did that. We are also in partnership, as I told you before, with Fort Davis Community Center. Fort Davis was trying to feed 700 people for Thanksgiving. So we donated some things to Mr. Fagan, who is the charge, it was in charge of the, the, the center. And we got this card back from him. Thank you so much for, for all of your assistance and kindness. The Fort Davis Community Youth Alliance, the Fort Davis Recreation Center. So your community service ministry is doing a lot of things in the neighborhood that, that, that actually reflects on the church. So you, you, you can be proud of the community service. Praise God. Now, don't go anywhere, Bill. Uh, I, I want it. Community service is working every week. They are working every week. Uh, and a lot of times, we don't know what they're doing. That's why I asked Bill to come forward. Uh, how many turkeys did you say, Bill? We gave away 90. Not, yeah, not, yeah. 90 turkeys ain't yeah. chicken feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. that's serious. Yeah. Um, in addition to what they did for Thanksgiving, tomorrow, Community Services is going to be at the intersection of Martin Luther King Boulevard and Malcolm X Drive. Is it Ma Malcolm X Avenue? Thank you. Malcolm X Avenue. And we're going to be giving food. We're going to be giving, giving clothing. We're going to be distributing um, literature to the people that are in that area. And so Community Services is working. Their compassion for people is driven by their passion for God. Uh, thank you, Bill. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Now, every month that they do their distribution out in the community, when we go to Martin Luther King, that area, um, there are hygiene packages that are given out. Hygiene packages are things that everybody needs. Uh, community service does it, Charlene, uh, Sister Wright, Sister Dixon, there's many of us that are sitting in here that participate in that. If you want to participate in it, we're only looking for a few good men and women. We don't need a whole lot. Just a few good men and women to be here at the church tomorrow at 830, and that's where we kick off. Thanks, Bill. Now, before, you, before I sit down, I just need to bring one other announcement uh, one other piece of information to your attention. Uh, you know today, which is the 16th, we are distributing Christmas cards in our community. I've got a bag full of Christmas cards. They are already signed, hand signed. There's no, there's no label in it. They're, they're all hand signed, and they have a, um, information about DuPont Park Church. In addition to distributing the Christmas cards, we're also distributing this pamphlet. This pamphlet we've had in our possession for uh, maybe the last three or four weeks, we'll be distributing this along with the Christmas cards. I encourage, we need more than a few good men uh, and women, so I'm encouraging you to meet me 
here in the front of the church on the organ side after church. Now, for those of you that have dinner prepared this afternoon or you're going to a dinner engagement, be encouraged to know that you can manage to give out these cards and still make your dinner appointment. It'll only take you 15 minutes to give out the cards. During Mother's Day, we gave cards out just to the mothers. During Father's Day, we had to search for the men to give the cards to. But today, you can give the card to any man or woman that you see. Now, there are specific locations that I'm going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm going to have you to go to, and I'll give you those. But let me just tell you so you will already know. There's a Sharper's Food Warehouse up in Coral Hills. We'll be at that location. There is a Safeway on Minnesota Avenue and Dick Street. We'll be at that location. And then there is a Safeway on uh, Naylor Road and Alabama Avenue, where the old Sears used to be. We'll be at that location. And then finally, we'll go up to the BP gas station up here and distribute. So we've got over 100 cards that we've got to give out. I don't want to give them all on my own because I'd be taking all the joy for myself. I want you to participate in it. <clears throat> Remember, the church is looking for TM. I, T-M-I, and what does it stand for? Total membership involvement. Total membership involvement. We're looking forward to see you at the close of service this, evening, this afternoon. Oh, Pastor, I do need to make one other announcement. Your, the announcement for your devotional books is in your bulletin. The, uh, the titles of the books, you need to make your donation for that by the 23rd, which is next Sabbath. Amen. Thank you, Elder Bay. Appreciate that. Here at DuPont Park, we like to celebrate birthdays. So if you had a birthday on this past coming week, we'd like you to stand up so that we can celebrate your birthday. Amen. Amen. Would y'all put your hands together for our birthday? On three, we want to say, oh, I see you, young man. On three, we want to say happy birthday. I see someone else. Hey, praise God. Praise God. One, two, three, we're going to say happy birthday. One, two, three, happy. happy birthday. Amen. And we're glad that God gave you one more year. Amen. We also like to celebrate wedding anniversaries. So if you celebrated a wedding anniversary on this past week, would you please stand so we can acknowledge you and celebrate you? Oh, my. I see two. Can we put our hands together for them? I'm going to put your hands together. And on three, we're going to say happy anniversary. One, two, three. Happy anniversary. And we wish you many, many more. You may... They want me to ask you how long you've been married. How long have you been married? 84. Speak up. You have to give her a kiss. Oh, oh, the tradition. The tradition. I'm so sorry. The tradition of DuPont Park says you have to show love to one another. So why don't you go ahead and show us some love? Come on, somebody say, hey, man. <laughs> You're not excluded, my brother. You got to show love. She's not here? Well, all right. that works too. Hey. <laughs> Praise God. We celebrate and thank you. How many years? Uh, my boy, Chris Pato, six years. Six years. We thank God for six years. Praise God. Wow. Praise you, the Lord. I'm reminded. As we transition into our worship service, I'm reminded of the day that I got married. I remember the day almost like yesterday. It was packed, family and friends all around. It was such a memorable day. I remember walking in with a big cheesy smile on my face, waving my hand as if the day was about me. <laughs> Then I remember when my wife walked in, I remember feeling some joy tingly on the inside. 
Remember, as she began to walk, began to ask, why is she walking so slow? When the pastor began to speak, my God, can we hurry up? When all was said and done throughout the day, the most memorable part was not how beautiful she looked, was not all the family members that were there, but it was what she said to me during those vows. She began to speak. And I began to wonder, who is she talking about, me? No, not me. And I was in awe as she began to speak. I'm reminded in the Bible when it says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. That as you begin to worship, I can imagine that God begins to feel a little something in his heart. He begins to inhabit and come within all of us. We've come to praise the living God. Worship is not about the building you're in. It's about you and God. Don't worry about what's around you. This is an audience of one. So as we worship God in spirit and in truth, give him your best worship. Talk to him. Expect something out of him as he blesses you and you bless him. Amen. Can I see a show of hands of how many people actually grew up in DuPont Park? Amen. Amen. One of the things I'm proud of is when young people who have grown up in DuPont Park come back and want to minister. And regardless of the genre, they're in their own special way. I'm always willing to say, come to your home and praise the Lord. Amen. So this morning, we're going to be blessed in a very special way by Mr. Tavon McNeil as he ministers to us today. Still morning time. How y'all doing, church? Um, uh, I played around this time of year. Uh, I don't know if it was a couple years ago or was it one year ago. And um, I had no idea what to play then. And this time I had no idea what to play again. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, Lord speaks to you in the last minute, the final hour sometimes, and <laughs> there you go. He makes it happen. So um, I'm going to play uh, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, but this has a little different twist to it. You know, normally it's a little chill, right? It's a little chill. But I'm going to need a little bit of um, interaction from you guys, if you don't mind. technical difficulties, but that's all right. Everybody feeling good? If you had a good week, say amen. amen. Oh, no. If you had a good week, say amen. amen. There we go.
Thank you. Christmas break now? No, not yet, not yet. Well, what can I tell you? Okay. So I have a question. How many have pets? What kind of pet? You don't have a pet? You don't have a pet? What kind of pet do you have? Um, a kitty cat. You get a kitty cat? You love your kitty cat? What's your kitty cat's name? Kid. All right. You have a pet? What's your pet's name? You got a dog? What's your dog's name? Well, when I was growing up, I used to live in Brooklyn, New York, and we lived in an apartment that caused snow that we had no pets. But my father was an animal lover. And I, too, am an animal lover. So back then, you know, it was, I think it was Thanksgiving time, and the cat, we saw a cat on the fire, um, fire escape, and we decided to give it some milk. We decided to feed it. And so after that, well, you know, the cat got loose in the apartment, and we had to be quiet, not waking my mother up, you know. So, you know, we were kind of mischiefs, all three of us, my brother, my father, and I. Well, because of my health issues, the doctor told my parents that I had to live more in a country-like atmosphere. So we left Brooklyn and we moved to Long Island. It took me a while to adjust because, you know, I'm used to the noise of the city, you know, the fire engines, the police sirens, you know, the normal noise. And unfortunately for me, moving out in the country, all I heard was crickets and birds and that stuff kept me up. I could not sleep with all that noise. It wasn't natural noise for me. But I loved animals. I love me some animals. So we had dogs. And when I say we had dogs, I mean we had dogs. So let me read you the scripture. My scripture says in Matthew 21, verse 22, let me find it here. It says, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. 
Now, my father was a praying man, and he taught us to pray. So here is my little doggy. I love stuffed animals, too, okay? So here's my little dog. And this kind of represents one of the dogs that we had. One time, we had three dogs. We had Sergeant, we had Princess, and we had Master. And this story is about Master. I love Master. Now, I can't remember what kind of dog he was. I know he was a mutt, but I loved him. Princess and Sergeant were German Shepherds. And I don't know what kind of breed Master was, but he was a nice-sized dog. So, I come home from school one day, and I'm looking at Master, because I love playing with my dogs. And I see Master, he done walked around in a circle, fell down, and started frothing and foaming at the mouth. I mean, frothing and foaming at the mouth. And I'm like, oh, my dog got rabies, he got rabies, he got rabies, he got rabies. Oh, my dog gonna have to die, he got rabies. I did not want to tell my father at all, because I knew they was gonna put my dog to sleep and I loved my dog. I wanted to go near my dog, but I was scared to go near because I heard if a dog bites you and has rabies, you can get rabies too. And I'm like, Lord, please, 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 oh please, my dog, my dog, my dog. Well, the little fit stopped and master kind of dazed and he got up and he came to me, I'm like, oh, okay, you're okay, you don't got rabies, right? You don't got rabies, right? And he looked at me, kind of dazed, like, girl, what is wrong with you? But I'm like, that's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But I noticed he did it again. And I'm like, Lord, please, 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 please don't let my dog have rabies. Please don't let him have rabies. So finally, my dad came home, and I'm like, Daddy, 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 there's something wrong with Master. I think he has rabies. I don't know. He walks around in a circle and he falls down and he, ah, 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 and he frothes and foaming at the mouth. I'm like, what is wrong with my dog? So my father decided he's going to wait and see. So he watched Master. And Master, yes, he did. He walked around in a little circle and he fell down ah, ah, and started frothing and foaming at the mouth. My father said, we're going to take him to the vet. Because my dad, he kind of knew that it wasn't rabies, but there was something really wrong with the dog. But me, I am praying, please, please, Lord, please don't let my dog have rabies. Please, 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 please. I am crying crocodile tears, please. My dad takes the dog to the vet, brings Master home. I'm like, what's wrong with Master? He says, Master has seizures. The dog had epilepsy. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Now. You know, epilepsy versus rabies. I take epilepsy any day. And I was so thankful that the Lord heard my prayer that my dog did not have rabies. Yes, he had epilepsy. And yes, we had to give him his pills every day that he didn't like to take, like a lot of us. But he had to take it anyway. You know, but I was thankful that as little as I was, God heard my prayer. But it also showed me that how my father also lived. My dad, he knew enough. And the way how he cared for animals told me how I am supposed to care for animals. And because the way how he cared for animals and how he cared for people, I grew up to be in my father's stead. My father was a nurse. I, too, have become a nurse. And I look at all the animals that God has given us as how we treat the littlest of them all. It's how we're supposed to treat each other. So if we treat the littlest of them all with love and kindness, we should be treating each other the same. I have a problem when we can treat the littlest of us all with love and kindness, but we can't do the same with each other. God wants us to love each other as we love the littlest of them all, okay? So always remember, no matter what, God hears and answers our prayers, and he wants us to love the littlest of them all as we love the biggest of us all. Who wants to pray for us today? Come on, Abu. Close your eyes. 
Jesus. Um, <laughs> and we all love you because we know and and and. us to love each other. We thank you for loving us. Amen. Thank you for Jesus. I love my mommy. They give me snacks every day I come home with Shawnee house. Amen. Amen. All right. Go your seats and we'll always remember to love one another. Good morning, church. You know, during this season, I didn't really know what to do really for tithes and offering today. For we know we've always talked about you can't, get, you can't beat God's no matter how you. We know that without God's grace and mercy, we wouldn't be here. And then we know that we return to faithful tithes and offering. So I wanted just to bring a little bit more light into it. But more importantly, I just wanted to also make this one comment. And it's about the measure of life. We know that a measure of life is not about its duration. We know that a measure of life is not about its duration. It's more about its donation. Or what have you donated to your life that God has given you? And in that process, we should know that we should give him, if we are true believers, a proper tithe in an offering. So we know that this giving time that we should always look back in retrospect. And as you talked about, the, the treasurer will talk about trying to catch up. If we know and understand that God is, he's always told us only 10% is for his tithe. If he was like anyone else, like taxes wise, if he raised that to 15%, we'd be, ra we'd be screaming and, and raving that we can't meet that tithe or offering. But we just know that our God is consistent. Our God is consistent with us. He's faithful to us. Regardless of what we don't give, he still gives to us regardless. And we gotta know that he is faithful to us even when we fall short. So in these times, let us not fall short as we get toward the end of the year. Let us bring him what is due to him. And let us, when we go into the new year, let us be faithful in our tithes and our offering to the Lord as he is faithful to us. So as the officers get ready to come forth to lift the tithes and the offering, let us pray. Dear most kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have given us. For we know that you are the, owner, you are the father that owns a cattle on a thousand hills that you don't need our tithes or our offering, but you're asking us as believers that we would give a proper tithes and offering to finish further your work. So we ask, dear Lord, that you'll prick our hearts and that you will show us that you love us regardless of our shortcomings and that we, as your children, will be faithful to you and give you what is due, that we do not want to rob you of yours, what is already yours. We ask this in his name, the sweet, majestic name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply. Echoing their joyous strain, oh, glory, 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 glory in excelsis Deo.
Shepherd's wife is to believe why your joy your strains prolong what the gladsome tidings be which in your heavenly soul Amen. What a beautiful song. I wonder why the angels go praising. The Savior was coming down to die. I wonder why they were praising him. He was coming to lay his life down. They looked at them because he was doing it for you. Truth is, it's simple. He laid his life down for you. Why? So you don't have to deal with the burdens. He said, give them to me. I'll take them. I don't know what you need, but the altar is open. I don't know what you need God to do in your life, but I need you to trust him that he's going to do it. It's prayer time. Whatever you need from God today, trust that he can take it. Trust that he can heal. I need you to stand to your feet as we sing this song. is open at this time. Whatever you want to lay to God, He says, come. My yoke is easy. If you will. sing that one more time. Maybe your year hasn't been the year that you wanted it to be. You've experienced grief everywhere. Financially, things were not looking right. Your family is practically in shambles. Your health is not where you wanted it to be. Maybe you didn't reach your goals. Maybe your relationship with God is not where it is supposed to be. God says, trust. trust me. It's not over. Trust be encouraged. Trust Father God, we've come to you on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. For you are a great God and you're worthy of the praise. 
Father, we thank you so much for the Christmas gift that you gave us. Your son who died on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we thank you, God, for doing what you did for us, even though we're undeserving. Father, the reality of the matter is we do not deserve to be in this church today. The truth of the matter is we do not deserve to even wake up this morning. The truth of the matter is we don't deserve the blessings. God, you could have started all over again. You could have done something different, but yet you saw something in us. You thought we were worthy. And so you died upon the cross for us. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice. Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. Because the truth of the matter is some of us are in need of you. Lord, actually all of us need you right now. The reality is somebody in here is dealing with something. I don't know what it is, but you know, God. Somebody's dealing with depression. Somebody's sad about their finances. Somebody's in need of, their, of, of help in their marriage. Somebody needs help at work. Somebody's dealing with some personal issues in their lives that they're too ashamed to talk to anybody about. God, we need you. God, on this beautiful Sabbath morning, we came to worship you, God, but some of us have not been able to worship because our minds are just focused on the things that have burdened us, God, and so we're coming to give them to you, God. Lift our burdens, O oh Lord. Encourage us, O oh God. Father, forgive us for our sins. The things that we do knowing is wrong and the things that we do not knowing is wrong. We ask, God, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask, God, that you wipe our sins away, God. The truth of the matter is, God, we don't deserve you, but yet you still love us. So help us to love you, God. Father, I come in the mighty name of Jesus, asking that you bless each and every person who has come to the altar at this place, in this time. God, you know what their need. Somebody in here needs healing for whatever sickness that they're dealing with. God, we don't want to see a miracle from the Bible. We want to see a real life miracle. So do it, oh Lord. We're asking God that you will heal some people, comfort some people who are dealing with death right now. Do it, oh God, for you are able. The Bible says you are exceedingly able to do above all that we can ask of God, and we thank you. But God, we need you to do it right now, God. We ask God that you build each and every person who's come up to the altar at this time who needs just you. The reality is some of us have had it all in life. We've had the money, but we were never satisfied. We need you, God. We need you, Lord. With so many things happening around the world, we need you, Lord. With our faith in danger of wavering, we need you, God. We need you to shower down your Holy Spirit. We need you to make us better people. We need you, God. And Father, most of all, you know that here at DuPont Park, we need you. We need you to reign your spirit on the leadership. We need you to reign your spirit on the members. Reign your spirit on the youth and young adult. We reign your spirit on the babies, God. Father, we need you to do something special on this church. This is your church, not our church. These are not, this is not for us to dictate, but for you to tell us what to do. And so God, we ask for guidance. We ask that you would help us to do that which you've called us to be. Help us to be a light in this community. May the frivolous things never be a distraction of what we're supposed to be doing. May we never get caught up in the building, never get caught up in the meetings, never get caught up in all these different things. But God, reign upon us. I pray your spirit on myself as I preach the word of God. Use me, oh God. Father, help us to trust you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.
on, put those hands together all over the building. Forever. Come on, forever. Those that can, stand on your feet and begin to bless the Lord with us. Come on, you can do it. All you've done for me. Yeah, yeah. Can we lift our voices and say blessings and glory? Come on. Blessings and glory. And honor, yeah. Everything belongs to you, Lord. To you. Come on, thank him right here. For blessing me, yeah. Come on, I need somebody to get excited about it. Say they just want to praise your name today. Forever. That means all the time. Come on, that's what we came to do today. For all you've done. You've done for me, yeah. Blessings and glory and honor. And honor. Everything belongs to you, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on, put them together. Come on, let's go. Oh, just want to praise you. Come on in here forever. Forever and ever, Lord, today we came to give you glory and honor, yeah, for all, all you've done for me, yeah, hallelujah, come on, blessings and glory, you get all the honor, God, they all belong to you, yeah, thank you, Jesus, yeah, Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody get excited and say, just want to praise forever, yeah. We came to give you all the glory and ever, yeah, yeah, for all, all you've done for me. Come on, point to yourself and say for me. Blessings and glory, and on the yeah. they all belong to you. Blessings and glory, and on the yeah. somebody say they all belong to you. Blessings, blessings and glory, and honor. Uh huh. They. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And honor. And honor. Yeah, they all belong to you. Somebody put your hands together. To Say it again. No music, right? Bless. Come on, right here. And honor. Somebody say everything belongs to you. Blessings and glory. Yeah. And glory. You get all the honor, Jesus. And honor. You get all the glory, Jesus. You get all the praise, yeah. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And honor. Oh, yeah. Come on, lift this up. Say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, for blessing me. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. just begin to lift our hands and talk to the Lord because we honor and we bless his very presence in our lives. The song just says, oh Lord, we worship and we adore you. We adore your name. We adore your presence. And so for that, we give you glory. We give you honor. I feel like I'm talking to him by myself right now, so I'm wondering if I could ask you all to begin to talk to the Lord and tell him that you worship and you adore his name. I feel like we're talking to ourselves. I'm going to ask you if you might lift your voice and say, Oh Lord, we worship and we adore. Even before we sing, you just begin to talk to him because you know him and you appreciate him. Oh, come on, open your mouth and let him hear the sound of worship in this room. Come on. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, 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 it's all right. We worship. And adore your name. Yeah. Your name. That's our sole purpose for being here today. We say, oh Lord, we worship you and adore, and adore your name, yeah, yeah, your name. Can we say it all over the room one more time? Just us and the Lord, come on, say it. We worship you, and we adore your name, your name. <laughs> yes, 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 come on. Create the sweet sound of worship. Oh, Lord, yeah. We worship and adore. Now can we open it up? Oh, oh Lord. Yeah. Come on, we say it. We worship. Can you lift your hands and say, and adore your name today? Your name, yeah, oh name, yes we do. We lift our hands and our voices in worship and say, oh Lord, we worship you. Come on, let's go there. Come on. Your name. Yeah. Take it up again now. Oh, Lord, yeah. We bless your name today. We honor your name today. Oh, my God. We give you glory. Let's go again. Come on. Give the Lord glory. Yeah. Hand the door. Come on, come on. Oh Lord, we give you all the glory and say, oh Lord, come on. Come on, one more time. I wish somebody would bless the Lord in here and say, oh, 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 Lord, we give you glory, hallelujah. Hand the door. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah. Somebody help me in this room and say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. Oh, yeah. Just want to tell you, oh, yeah. Tell you. Thought I love you, yeah. More, more, more. Now, can we act like we love him in here and say, say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Worship.
worship and adore you, yeah. Just want to tell you, yeah. My God, but I love you, yeah. More than anything. Come on, all over the room. Can we stand on our feet and lift our hands and our voices and say, I love you. One more time. Last time, come on. All over the room, lift your voices and say, Say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore your name. Oh, I, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Just yeah. Tell you. Lord, I love you, yeah. More than anything. So this is what we say to him. So I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. Yes, yes, yes. You reign on your throne, yeah. for you are God, God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Because of you, my issues now are gone. Yeah. And I can sing to you this song. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Now worship the Lord today. Come on, worship him today. Come on, worship him today. I love you more than anything. Yeah. I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything. <laughs> I love you more than anything. Would you have gave God a round of applause? If you love the Lord, why don't you put your hands together and give him some praise? I want to thank the praise team, the choir, for a job well done, the band. God is good, amen. God don't sound like God is good. God is good, amen. amen. Would you stand to your feet as we go to God in prayer? Turn into the book. Turn into the book of John chapter 21, beginning with verse 15. Father, we are so internally grateful for your sacrifice. <clears throat> but thank you for God, your son who died. And Lord, we have come to worship. We've come to praise. And now, Lord, that we've done all that, we need a word from you. So God, would you speak? For your servants are listening. Amen. Book of John chapter 21 and verse 15. And when you have it, say amen. And if you do not have it, say wait a minute. I heard a couple of waiting minutes, so we will wait a minute. Book of John chapter 21, beginning with verse 15. Actually, verse 14. Book of John chapter 21. Beginning with verse 14. 
And when you have it, would you say amen? Amen. 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 This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him again, and he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I already love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I'm going to read that one more time. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved. Because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. You may be seated even in the presence of God. For the next few moments, I would like to speak under the title, The Grace in Christmas. The Grace in Christmas. Brothers and sisters, if, my, if I may be honest with you, this year will be the first time I will be celebrating Christmas in my house. First time. Not that we had a negative connotation on Christmas growing up, but this year will be the first time. And I said to God, since this will be my first time celebrating Christmas, This will also be my first time preaching a Christmas message. I said, God, so what would you have me tell these distinguished people at DuPont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church? Would you have me go to the book of Matthew chapter 1 and deal with the genealogy of Jesus? Talk about how Jesus came from Abraham to David to Solomon to from Rahab, Tamar, all the way down to Mary the Virgin. What would you have me say to the people of of DuPont? Is the word that they need to know that Christmas, your, your coming symbolizes that it's not about where you're from, the things of your past. It's not about your socioeconomical status because Jesus is born out of a lineage of murderers, thieves, rapists, and all these different people, born to a virgin by the name of Mary, raised in the ghetto of Nazareth, born to a poor old carpenter by the name of Joseph, what would you have me tell the people of DuPont? That you're never discounted from the love of God, because if Jesus can come from that type of lineage, then maybe we too can be used by God. And God said, no, that's a word, but that's not the word. And I said, well, God, what would you have me tell the people of DuPont Park? Would you have me go to Matthew chapter 2 and deal with the wise men? How the wise men came, the astrologist was studying the star, and they found the way to Jesus. That sometimes God will use pagan origins to lead people to Jesus. That God is not limited or in a box that he needs, that he needs to do tradition in order for people to come to him, but God can use a man or a woman. Somebody should have said amen. God can use drums or no drums. God can use whatever he wants, but if you're open, God will use you. God said, that's a word, but that's not the word. And I said, well, God, is the word still in the, in the, in the story of the wise man with the fact that they begin to worship the king of kings, even as a baby, and that the Pharisees knew and knew the scripture, but yet when the stars showed up, they did not know went where to go, or did not even recognize that Jesus was here. Could it be that sometimes in our churches, that unbelievers, when they come to the church, out-worship us? 
Could it be that sometimes that those who recently meet Jesus have somehow a deeper faith because they're not bogged down by the traditions of the religion? They're not bogged down by the traditions of the church? And they out-worship us. And God said, that's a word. But that's not the word. And I said, well, God, could it be the word is coming from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20, dealing with the shepherds? That God, these shepherds who were the lowliest, lowest in their econ economy, they were dirty, were not deserving. Nobody talked to them. They smelled. Nobody wanted to be interacted or be seen by them. But yet your angels go and tell the shepherds. Notice that the Bible does not say it goes into the churches. Notice that the Bible says it doesn't go to the pastors. Notice that the Bible doesn't say that it goes to those that know him. It says it goes to the people who they disregarded. Could it be that God is trying to say that he can use you no matter what you are? No matter how much you've been discounted by the people of God, no matter how much the, the society tells you that you're not worthy, that God can still use you, that God sees you as someone worthy enough to show up to you. God said, that's a word. But that's not the word. God said, preach what Christmas means to you. God led me to the book of John chapter 21. It is here in the book of John chapter 21 that we find Jesus and the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Jesus and the disciples, after having eaten breakfast, and is now interacting with Peter. You must understand that Jesus has now been on the cross, rose from the tomb, seen Mary, talked to Thomas, interacted with the, uh, with the disciples, and now he's talking to Peter. Jesus has rose up, seen Mary, seen the other disciples, dealt with Thomas, and yet now he's talking to Peter. This is a strange and a weird conversation that is going on here because Jesus is a man asking another man, do you love me? But that's not the strange part or the heartbreaking part of the word. Because you must understand that Jesus is talking to Peter. The same Peter who he said, you will deny me three times. And three times, Peter denied him. The same Peter who said, Lord, I will never leave you. Even if they reject you, I'll always be with you. The same Peter that Jesus hung around with. The same Peter that Jesus laid hands on his mother-in-law. The same Peter who saw Jesus in the Mount of Transfiguration. The same Peter who had so many deep and close encounters with Jesus. The same Peter who talked and walked with Jesus more and more in depth, more than the other disciples outside of Peter, James, and John. The same Peter is now here. And Jesus begins to ask him, do you love me? Let me bring it down. Let me make it personal. Have you ever been in the presence of someone that you've wronged and they know you wronged them? Have you ever been in the presence of someone that you did dirty? You may have said something about them and they found out. And when they came into your presence, things were just awkward. Tension was filled in the room. That is what is here at this moment. The grace in Christmas is this, that God's grace covers us even when we go do wrong because his grace is not dependent on what we do right or what we do wrong. Watch this. Jesus comes, he meets Mary, Sees, Tom, sees the disciples. The first, Jesus comes, meets Mary. First time, comes to the disciples. Second time, he's with the disciples again. The third time, he talks to Peter. Each time that he comes, 
Peter's in the mist. It seems almost to Peter that God is mad at me. He came the first time, appeared, but he did not talk to me. He came the second time, appeared, but he talked to Thomas, but he didn't speak to me. It seems as though God is mad at me. Have you ever felt so ashamed of the sins in the past that you've done that you feel like you cannot come to God? Have you ever felt so disgusted by yourself with the things you might have done in the past? Have you ever felt so unworthy to even call out the name of Jesus? You know, the reality of the matter is sometimes people in church do not worship God, not because they don't want to, but it's sometimes they don't feel like it's, they're worthy enough. This is how Peter feels. And so God comes. Here's Jesus. Do you love me? How heartbreaking for Jesus to say that. You know I messed up. You said I was going to mess up. And then in front of everybody, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Watch this. He says, do you love me more than these? Because when Peter, after the first time Jesus didn't speak to him, after the second time Jesus didn't speak to him, Peter went back to being a fisherman. The Bible says in chapter 20 that Peter says to the disciples, I'm going fishing. After the encounter with Thomas, the second encounter, he says, you know what? I used to be a fisherman. I recognize that what I did was so terrible. I feel bad. God is mad at me. What can I do? I'm going back to be a fisherman. And so the Bible says they're, ha they, they're having breakfast at the sea because Jesus shows up at the sea. Because that's what grace is. It shows up even when you run away from him. It covers you even when you did wrong. It covers you even in the midst of knowing that you're undeserving. That's the grace in Christmas, that God came to cover you, that even though you're unworthy, because Jesus didn't have to go find Peter. Peter could have went to God and said, I'm sorry, but he was too ashamed. But God went to Peter. Grace, grace, God's grace. The Bible says Jesus meets the disciples at the scene. And when he meets them at the sea, they have been fishing all throughout the night. The Bible says they did not find anything. But when Jesus comes, he says, cast your net. He, they cast their net. All of a sudden, a multitude of fish come. Then he says, come, let's eat. Jesus begins to eat with them. Peter, do you love me? Ah, oh, how heartbreaking. But the question is so pointed. Do you love me more than these? Notice Jesus doesn't say, do you know that I love you? Because that's not the question in play. We know that Jesus loves us. But you know what the enemy does? The enemy wants to trick us to making us think that because we've sinned, we can no longer love Jesus. Because you've done wrong, you can no longer worthy or be worthy to be in the presence of God. Do you love me? In other words, he's saying, Peter, you are with me throughout all my ministry. You've seen undeserving people. You've seen all these people get healed. You've seen me do all these wondrous things. Do you love me? Can your love for me transcend beyond your emotional inability to understand that grace covers you? Because sometimes we allow our emotions to get in the way of what the Bible really tells us. We allow our emotions to tell us who we are and what we are, what we ought to feel and what we ought to do. And so Peter believes that God is mad at me. I can't possibly love him. Then he says, do you love me? More than these. God is essentially saying, Peter, I know you messed up. I know you did wrong. 
But do you love me more than these? Can you accept my grace? I died on the cross, laid in the tomb, rose up again. Do you believe? That word right there, it says love. In, in its original language, Jesus is asking, do you believe in what my grace is? And the question to you is, do you believe in God's grace to you? That God can forgive no matter what you've done. That God can heal in spite of you causing your own sickness. God's grace will cover you beyond that which you can comprehend. Do you love me? Do you believe? Then he says, tend to my sheep. Because your mistakes do not define your present. Your presence your present now is dependent on what you believe God believes about you. Tend to my sheep. Me? The one who denied you in front of everybody? Tend to my sheep? Second time. Do you love me? Because God is not worried about what you did in the past. Feed my sheep. Peter, God actually says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? I've often found that the reason why Peter responds the way he does it's because Peter is not operating under Simon. Peter was given a new name by God. God says, you're no longer Peter. Peter's angry. He's impulsive. Peter's always trying to prove, prove something. Your name is Simon. It's not Peter. The Bible says right here, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Then after each response, after the third response, it says Peter responded. Because Simon is not operating in the belief that God has already forgiven him. Simon is not operating in the belief that God has already, already given him grace. Because Simon is not operating in his God-given name that God already laid his life down so that he might have a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, a hundred chance, or two hundred chances. Because Simon is operating under Peter. Why do you keep operating under Peter when God has already said you are Simon? Why do we keep beating ourselves down when God has already said you are forgiven? Why do you keep walking down, walking around with burdens on your heart when God says, I already forgave you? And you want to know how I forgave you? Simon. Simon, son of Jacob. Because if God had not forgiven him, he would have said, Peter. Do you love me? But you're not Peter. You are Simon. Oh, yes, God. Thank you for the grace. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? You must know that grace was given to you by God because God wants you to know that grace is a provision for that which is going to happen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, 18 and 19, I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my congregation, and the gates of the grave will not override it. Jesus is telling Peter that him himself will build the congregation and the grave will not, hold its cap its, its, will not hold its members captive. 
And then he says to Peter, don't miss that. He says to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of the heavens. In other words, this is what happened. Simon, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. No, Lord, I'm not going to deny you. You're going to reject me. No, Lord, I'm not going to. A couple of scenes later, do you know, were you with this man? I know you. You're, you're one of his disciples. No. You're one of, no. You're one of, no. God predicts, God prophesies. It happens. But the provision and grace is said right here in Matthew 18. When God says, I will build my congregation, I've given you the keys to the heavens. In other words, the good news was Peter, who's now Simon, was always, was already forgiven before his act happened. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of the heavens. But how can he give someone he has not forgiven? How can he give someone he has not pardoned? How can he give someone who he's already not given? How can he give someone who he has not already given grace to? Before Simon, Peter, commits and rejects God, God already forgiven him. Because he said it right there. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. And we look in the book of Acts. The church starts with Peter. That's good news, Pastor. Yeah. 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 What is grace to me? What does Christmas mean to the pastor? Christmas is God's giving grace for myself. Because God already knew I was going to sin. But he says, I'm going to die to cover you. I'm going to give you many opportunities to come to me. The choice is yours. What is Christmas to the pastor? Christmas is the grace. The, Miss White talks about the plan of salvation even before the sin happened. That means if God knew the sin was going to happen, yet he still created us. And he said, I'm going to die for them. That simply means that Christmas is just another way of celebrating God's grace. I love the trees. I love the celebrations. Christmas, to me, is simply God's grace given to me even before I sinned. That when I was Peter, God already named me Simon. That when I was, when I was in my sin, that God already forgave me. That when I was doing wrong, God already promised. Oh, my gosh. The grace in Christmas. The Bible says that Jesus is sitting down with Peter. Do you love me more than these? Tend to my lambs. Because the reality of the matter is just because you've sinned doesn't mean that you've fallen outside of the grace of God. Just because you've sinned does not mean that your previous encounters with God are erased. God is not a man that when you, when you make him mad, when you do something wrong against him, that he's like, you know what? I thought we were cool. I did this for you. I died for you. I gave you this. I did this. I did that. He says, tend to my lambs because lambs don't know any better. But you know, you have an experience with me. He says, tend to my lambs. Be my shepherd over these lambs. Because grace gives you provision. Grace covers you. You must know, final point, that Jesus finds him at the sea of Tiberias. 
I like the way the writer tries to play, do the wordplay here. And everywhere else in the Bible, he doesn't use to bearers. This sea, this particular sea, is the same sea that Peter sees Jesus. And then he says, Lord, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, allow me to walk on this water, the Sea of Galilee. God comes to what Peter and him had an encounter before to remind him that you tried last time and you failed. You rejected me, but I'm coming back to you where you said, Lord, if it is you, let me walk to remind you one more time to keep in that faith that it is I. I'm still able to make you walk on water. I'm still able to forgive sins. Lord, if it is you, what is the significance of this? God will always meet you. God will always send you a reminder. The first time, his, his faith wavered. This time, God gives him authority and confidence in his faith, allowing him to know that this time, God did it. God's grace covered me. What is Christmas to the pastor? The trees are wonderful. I'm going to have a tree in my house. The, the songs are wonderful. I'm looking forward to singing off key with my wife. <laughs> I'm looking forward to baking cookies. Though I cannot bake. Pray for my wife. I'm looking forward to all that. But I'm also looking forward to celebrating God's grace. When you read the entire book of John, remember, I want you to pay, cl pay close attention to this. Every encounter in the book of John is about belief. John 3, verse 16. It's about belief. God wants you to believe that he's covered you. God wants you to know that you're covered. Now, I don't want you to leave this sermon having said that the pastor said it's okay to sin and God will forgive you anyhow. Because the Bible says, three times he asked Peter. Peter, the third time, grieved. That's when Jesus saw that he was really repentant. Grace is there for you. Grace is given. Accepting grace means repenting from your sins. Accepting grace means understanding I've done wrong. You cannot receive that which you do not understand. My father, when I was in high school, had this beautiful white Mercedes Benz. Took me about a year and a half to drive it. It always annoyed me that my older brother drove it before. Anytime. And the thing about it was, my brother was at Oakwood, and I was at the house. And what was most annoying was that he would come from school, and dad would literally not even say a word. He didn't even offer. He just goes into the other seat. When I was studying this message, God said to me, that's what grace is like. Grace is understanding that when you are mature and know to accept that you've done wrong, you've done this, and you can accept, then you receive him. 
I didn't get why dad wouldn't let me drive the car at such an early age. Because I didn't understand the cost that came with grace. I didn't understand the magnitude of this car, the insurance, the cost, and all these different things. So I spent my time being annoyed. But God reminded me, oh God, thank you, Lord. Grace is received when you understand that you did a wrong. After Peter repented, he understood grace. I love the fact that the Bible does not show anywhere where Peter says, Simon says to Jesus, God, I'm sorry. You were right. Could it be the mere fact that God, he already knew that Jesus had forgiven him in that encounter? Grace. Grace. God's grace. The grace in Christmas. Will you accept it? Do you receive it? He died for you so that you might have life indeed. <laughs> Grace. Grace. Does anybody get excited about grace? That you know you've messed up so many times, but yet God already covered you? Oh, grace. So many times I think about the things I've done in my life. God, how can I be a pastor? I used to... I used to get so spiritually down because I didn't understand. God, I've done these things. I've said these things. As a matter of fact, when, pe when people ask me, well, how long you been in the ministry? Were you at Oku? Did you do theology? I said, no, I did, the I did um, physical therapy. Well, to be truthfully honest, I started out as a nursing major. Changed my major and went undecided. From undecided and then did physical therapy. All because I was running from God. Because I felt that God, I was not worthy of God's grace. Now, I'm still not worthy of his grace. But now I'm aware that he gave it for me. That even in spite the fact that I'm not worthy, he still gave it for me. So accept it. And so I did physical therapy around my senior year. The call became stronger. Talked to my pastor. And he said, let's do it. Let come to the church and work. And I said, God, I still can't do it. All the things that I've done in the past, all the things that I've said in the past, all the people I've wronged in the past, I'm not a good child at home. God said, Tanache, that's what qualifies you for grace. Your sins are what qualify you for grace. Your sins are what qualifies you for God to use you. Because now that you've been there, you know grace. Now that you've experienced it, you can say, I was there, but look at me now. I used to be like this, but here I am now. I used to say these things, but now I don't curse no more. People can try me now, and now I can be Christ-like. He says, do you love me? <laughs> Tend to my sheep. 
because now you are qualified because you've rejected me. Oh, grace. I'm done. Kwai, would you take us home?
My appeal is simple. Man, I don't know what you're dealing with. Grace. Can I pray for you? Do you need prayer? there's anybody in here who wants to accept God accept his grace would you just stand to your feet and say God I accept your grace now I see while they're singing this song if there's anybody in here who wants to say, God, I want to give my life to you because of your grace. But oh, God, I just want to commit my life to you. The altars are Think about that. If you want a special prayer, you already know you're baptized, you know you committed your life to God, but you just want prayer of your life, we just come to the altar right now. Grace that is greater than all your sins. Father, we thank you for the grace of God. We thank you for just giving us this marvelous grace. Grace that will cleanse all our sins. And God, we're so grateful that you no longer see us as Peter, but you called us Simon. Father, people have come up here today. Lord, I don't know what they need. You know. Whether it's forgiveness, God, forgive them, oh God. Whether it's you taking away that burden of the sins of the past, take it, oh God. I don't know what they need, but you know, God. So God, please cover their sins with the grace. We thank you, God, for the, the, the grace in Christmas, the plan of salvation. Oh God, thank you so much. Uh, you thought we were worth saving. And we thank you for saving us, God. For dying on the cross of Calvary. And because of this, we are able, undeservingly, but you said we're worthy. So God, forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for that grace that is greater than all our sins. In the
mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You are free. That grace that is greater than all your sins. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse with him. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sins. Let us stand for the benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your message of love and hope. We thank you for grace. So as we reflect on the life of Jesus and the sacrifice that he made, that we might have eternal life. Now as we go, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory for now and for all eternity. Amen. I feel God telling me to do this. Today I'm going to stand up here and those who want specific particular prayer, I'm going to stand right here and I'm here to pray with you. Church is dismissed. Amen. We can fellowship, but I'm going to stand in the front and those who need prayer, you just want prayer, specific particular prayer. God is telling me to do this and I must be obedient.